Alrighty, we're midway through Heli Expo 2017. We've been walking from one end to the other, seeing what's new and what's exciting. There's been a number of announcements, but more important, it's time to get some updates. Tell us what's happening with the TH-180 program right now. Well, we started this project a couple years ago. We've got all of our design data submitted to the FAA now. We're doing the stress analysis reports. We've started the actual structural tests. We've got some flight test plans in and approved and we're just starting the initial flight testing of it, the actual four credit flight testing. What does the timetable look like at this point as far as the deployment of this aircraft? We're still planning on certification before the end of this year. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work, it's pretty ambitious, but I think it's feasible. Where do you see the market for this aircraft primarily? We're going after the training market. There's a kind of a whole forming because some of our former competitors aren't really in production anymore and we want to get into that so we're hoping to get into the flight schools and the training facilities. What were the main factors in developing the TH-1A? What did you think was necessary for Enstrom to market a proper training aircraft? Well we believe any trainer has got to be safe and forgiving and we don't think there's an aircraft out here that's safer or more forgiving than the Anstrom. So our goal was to get it smaller, lighter, and reduce the operating cost, still maintain the, the real forgiving qualities and the safety aspects. When you talk about safety, how does that coalesce into this airframe? We've got the rotor system, which is got a real good history. It's got a lot of controllability. We have a, the landing gear is real robust, real stable very controllable aircraft. This test program obviously had a hiccup along the way, but that's why they call it flight testing. <laughs> I'm an NTPS grad, so believe me, you got my sympathies. I know how that stuff goes. Do you think at this stage of the game, though, that you lost anything in the process there? Do people understand that this is the part and parcel of a solid flight test program that occasionally things break? Um, you know, the thing that what's, what frustrates us, the thing that broke was a piece of our flight test equipment. Yeah. And um, you know, the guy actually clipped off a power pole on the way to the ground, uh, dropped the aircraft in, he flattened the gear, the aircraft stayed upright, and he just climbed out with no injuries or anything. So, in a way, it proves out the crashworthiness and the resiliency of the airframe, and it wasn't the aircraft design that let us down. We lost time, we lost schedule, but, you know, to me, we didn't lose anything with the aircraft. And learned a few things in the process. Yes. Yep. At this point, what do you expect the aircraft to go out the door for? We're shooting for around 400000 That's not real firm yet, but obviously the cheaper the better. And what kind of production rate do you expect once this thing goes into production? I think we're going to start with 25 and plan on gearing up from there. Alrighty. Well, we appreciate your time. I know it's busy here on the floor of Heli Expo, and good luck with the rest of the program. All right. Thank you, Jim. It's been my pleasure. Aero TV is brought to you by If you ever wanted big glass in your cockpit but didn't have the space? Now with Avidyne's IFD series, touchscreen GPS navigators, and our new IFD 100 iPad app, having big glass in your cockpit is finally within reach. Free Flight Systems is expanding its business into the Part 25 aviation industry through new avionics shop dealers manufacturer partnerships, and STC programs. With a focus on the next-gen airspace and remote-mounted sensor systems, Free Flight Systems will continue to be a leader in the next-gen airspace. Visit freeflightsystems.com for details.